Welcome to my one shot. This is Adam Crenn, and I am going to talk comics, or more specifically, collecting comics. But first, a word from our sponsor, Cosmic Comics, the jewel of the Mojave Desert. Uh, this store is awesome. We have everything. Um, if you don't believe me, check out the website, CosmicComics.Vegas, or CosmicComicsLV.com, or... You want to go to the store, just click the link in the description below. All the links in the below, uh, description below. Anyway, so collecting comics. So you want to collect comics. What's stopping you? Get started. Oh, oh, but you want to collect comics from back when these heroes first started, like Spider-Man and Superman. And the only thing stopping you is several hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy these classic books to read. That'd be a good point. Uh, most people simply can't afford them. And to be honest... Nowadays, are used more for investors than actual fans or readers of those comics. So, but you still want to know, right? You still want to know what these characters are about. Now, comics nowadays, if anything, modern comics are fractured, or st the storylines are fractured. What I mean by that is there's... <laughs> Yes. He's grunting. And what I mean by that is there's so many creators that do so many different things that a lot of times they don't even feel like they're in the same universe and they get rebooted a lot. Yes. Um, but you want to go back to the beginning. Well, I have a solution. There's several ways you can do this. I'm going to quickly go through a few of them and then I'm going to show you a few examples. So um, originally back in the aughts, there was two big publications that both DC and Marvel put out, probably to compete with each other. Marvel called their the essential, there's the essential collections, and DC called theirs the showcase, DC showcase. They were all in black and white though, but they were cheap. I mean, I want to say one of those big books, and it was probably like thirty or forty comics in them. They were only like fifteen dollars. Yeah. I mean, the price point was great. Yes. Right, but they were black and white. You got the story, but you didn't get the color. The color, yeah. Yep. So it left fans a little lacking. Uh, so Marvel Godzilla. <laughs> after yeah, after 2010, they actually, well, there was always actually since the 90s, there was something called the Marvel Masterworks, and those started coming out in the 90s. And they have a couple different covers. This is only one of the covers. Um, this is the main cover that has a character, and this is Volume One for that. Or oh, I'm sorry, Volume Three for this character, and it tells you exactly on the cover what issues are in here pertaining to the Ghost Rider character. Um, Marvel Masterworks, they've been out for a long time. Other covers are in order, Volume 1 through, I think they're up to 290 or something like that. I think so, yeah, and when it, it comes to the variants and all and that. It, and it just talks about different characters, but they're all, believe it or not, they, they, they're, it's hard to explain, they're, they're linked. So they're not, even if you have like Volume 283, it might very well be Ghost Rider Volume 3. And it actually says that on the cover. They don't try to deceive you. And the Marvel Masterworks completely deal with those. Um, the biggest problem with Marvel Masterworks and why um, why they... Well, I mean, they, are, they have been very successful for Marvel. But the problem with a lot of collectors that want to check out characters is the price point is pretty high on these. But they are very nice books meant for a lot of wear and tear. So, I mean, they're, they're definitely meant to read. Um, so that's those. So another thing, that's the Marvel Masterworks. So um, Marvel did another thing, which um, they did another thing, which doesn't make sense to me. But more modern interpret or more modern variations of the old essential collections is the Epic Collection. But they also have what's called the Complete Collections, like this uh. Werewolf by Night. <laughs> They're the same thing. I don't understand why they have a Complete and an Epic Collection. Um, I'm guessing the Epic Collection has more things in numerical it, it order, I guess. It doesn't. The no? Complete Collection, Volume 3 of Werewolf by Night, is the Werewolf by Night that left off from 2 going all the way to his end, I believe. Huh. His final issue. And it actually it actually has the future issues that they tried to put out in the 90s hmm. with Werewolf by Night and Moon Knight, which weren't very good. But uh, huh. that's a Complete because Collection. They're formatted exactly like the Epic Collections. The Epic Collections are very good. Um huh. It'll tell you on back what volume it is. It tells you on back what every issue that's in there. This is Black Panther Volume 1. So it gives you Good every stuff. issue um, pertaining to Black Panther. The only complaint I have with some of these, and it doesn't, I don't know if it pertains to this one, because by, if you don't know, Silver Age Comics, especially Marvel Com, well, they all did it back in the day, is each comic actually had like three stories in it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like nowadays where it's one story. No, no, it's not or, even one story. It's or, like one one scene of a yeah. story. That's what pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, even after 1965, most comics only had one story. So um, some of the epic collections, if it's like, let, I won't use, let's say, uh, what's a good character to use? Submariner. So let's say it's an old Strange Tales um, that you want with Submariner in it, but you have the Strange Tales complete collection with that issue number in it. It's It might not have the Submariner issue in it unless the co complete collection with the main characters, which in that case is yeah. Johnny Storm and Ben Grimm. Unless they're actually dealing with Submariner, he's not in it. I know this. That's is like, a little frustrating. I know this somewhat yeah. pertains to Spider-Man since there's a Spider-Man epic collections, right. but at the same time, like thick trade paperbacks of oh, all the issues where Spider-Man fights Vulture, all the issues where Spider-Man. Well, Spider I'm gonna get into that too. Oh. Yeah. I'm oh, get, no, that's okay. okay. I'm gonna talk about that. Okay, too. good because that's something I have an issue with. <laughs> so, um, so DC has their own thing. They're not really called anything specific. But they also have their own collection. Like, let's go Superman. You want to go back to the golden age of Superman. Obviously, you're not going to be able to afford the several hundreds of thousands of dollars for Action Comic number one, even in terrible condition. Yes. Um, it will still be several, yeah, several thousands upon thousands of dollars. But you can get Superman, the golden age, volume one, which actually has all those old comics in it. Um, so you can go right at the beginning with Action Comics number one, or whatever issue he came out in, and it's just a really good way to get those issues for the story. Um, so you can read them and you can understand the character better. They have, and there's a, there's a ton of these out. Um, there's Batman, there's Flash, there's Wonder Woman. Here's the Flash for the Silver Age, Volume 1, because they break them off by comic ages. I'm not going to give you a lengthy description of each comic age because that could, that's its own thing. And sometimes it's not a clear cut when those ages start and end. Um, so, yeah, there's that. And then, you know, other companies do it, too. You want old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles drawn by Eastman and Laird themselves or, you know, by those guys? they actually those. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate Collections. They're softbound and hardbound. These are also really great. Um, and then another way, probably the final way I'm going to talk about is, well, not the final way I have an example of, are omnibuses. Um these can be very thick. The price point is fairly high, but you also get a lot of issues. Like this one in spe specifically has 35 issues in it, 34 issues in it, something like that. Um, but this is volume three for Amazing Spider-Man. So it, where does it, it has, like this has issues 68 through 104. My math was probably off there. Yeah, 36 issues. So um, yeah, that's another way to collect them. My only complaint with these is these are beautiful books and they tend to be pretty sturdy. It's just they're not always convenient to read because they yes. are big and heavy books. You don't want to damage them. And some, yeah, some of the omnibuses are even thicker. So. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, another way you can collect them, which I don't have examples of, is they tend to release. Sometimes they just release specific storylines in graphic novel or what they call trade collected, or they have. Sometimes you'll see like every time Spider-Man fights a vulture, like Tony was saying. You know, the biggest problem with those is they it's it they're double dipping. Yeah. Um, if you only care about that, I guess it's fine. If you if you want to pick up all the Spider-Man stories, you probably don't need to get that. You probably already have them. Because you probably already have them. That's exactly right. Um, anyway, so that is my guide to collecting comics for the story, not for the investment, if you want to read them. Um, Epic, collections are, Epic Collections and those DC soft covers are, in my opinion, the most cost-effective way to do it. Um, especially considering how expensive some of these old comics are. Uh, however, the price on those has been creeping up <laughs> recently with, well, everything's been going up recently, right? Yes. So anyway, um, yeah, that's all I got. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you have a better way, I mean, of course, there's always Comixology. You can pick a lot, a lot of these up online, but I, I prefer, I'm an old guy. I, I prefer to have the book in my hand. Um, but let me know what you think. Uh, and that's really all I got for today. Check out our comments below. You know, um, Tony's got his own YouTube channel. Uh, yes. He does a he does Fair another things. Yep. So anyway, yeah, check out the links below and uh, like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, that's it for me. Thanks, guys. I am out of here.